Luke chapter 2. And there were shepherds living out in their fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. to be able to celebrate with you today. It's a, it's a great day. How about our cantata? That was fantastic, wasn't it? You know, they, they start practicing for that in the summertime. Um, and, and speaking of time, I, we combined three services into one today, so I figure that's three hours. We still have another two hours and 15 minutes, so buckle up. I hope you brought your coffee with you. So in, in June of 2005, uh, Shannon and I had, had just um, got some like crazy wake up information from her body. Uh, she started getting contractions in the middle of the night. And so we, being this our first child had no idea what to do, what to expect, and so we rushed to the hospital, and, and we got there early, and on the way, we called all the family and, and said, we're, we're going to the hospital. It was the middle of the night, and we got everybody together, and um, everybody came to the hospital, and then Shannon and I went in, and we waited and waited and waited. You know how that works, and, um, and so she eventually goes into full-blown labor, and I um, had to stand there and watch my wife in absolute torture um, and, and be a part of that for a while and just just suffering with her, not even close to what she was going through, but knowing the pain that she was in was, was just awful. Yet, I remember how exciting it was when baby Grace appeared in our lives. And, and whenever they finally... Moms and dads, you know how this goes. When they finally got her all cleaned up um, and, and then handed her off to Shannon and the, the joy that we experienced in that moment and, and when they gave her to, to Shannon, it was my job to go out and tell the rest of our family what had happened. And I remember being so excited to like go through those doors and, and Shannon's parents and her brothers and, and my parents and my sister were all there. My sisters and her husband were the whole, everybody was there. And I, I, come, I remember coming through the doors and saying, she's here. And, and how excited we were. She's healthy and she's well and Shannon is doing well. And it was so exciting to share that great good news. And so this morning we're finishing up this series called What Child Is This? And, and we're finishing up today this, um, this focus that we've had on specific people. We started talking about Herod and his fear. And, and we, we talked then about the innkeeper and the innkeeper's lack of care for what was really going on. And then last week about Joseph 
And, and so today I don't want to focus on a person, but I want to focus on a group of people, specifically the shepherds. And, and you heard it a little bit in the, um, the cantata this morning about how the shepherds received the news from the angels and they were the first ones to be able to witness the birth of the Savior of the world. And so I want us to ask a question for, our, for ourselves today. Why shepherds. Why did God choose these people, specifically these people in Bethlehem, why would God choose them to be the very first witnesses of this child that would change the world? We don't know a whole lot about these specific shepherds from this passage in Luke. But we do know a lot about shepherds, especially shepherds during the time of Jesus. And so when we, when we look at shepherds, we know that they worked very, very hard with very little sleep. It was the role and responsibility of a shepherd to protect their sheep, to protect them from wild animals, to protect them from a person coming to steal those Sheep, And so many times they would go without sleep at night because they were trying to protect their sheep. We know that, that the job of a shepherd is one that is in, incredibly lonely. That they would have been outside of the, the town, outside of the city borders, in the fields. And there weren't a lot of people around. And so they would often be lonely without much interaction with other people. We know that, that they didn't work a very glamorous job. In fact, no kid, whenever they got to age, said, hey, I can't wait to be a shepherd when I grow up. It was not a very glamorous job. Most shepherds had very little to no education. And even though these shepherds were not a sought-after position, the Israelites had a very long shepherding heritage. If you read in the scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, you will find shepherding all through the Old Testament. You will find lots of places where the people of God were shepherds. God always was using and proclaiming his message. He was constantly using people who were shepherds to tell his story. It was a part of who they were as a nation, the Israelites. And, and we know that, that a typical Israelite family, it would be the youngest child in the family that would often end up in the role of the shepherd. It's why we, we find David as the shepherd in his family and his brothers off to war because David was the youngest in the family. He would be given the lowliest position in the family. So here you have these, these looked down on people, uneducated, lonely, overworked, and underappreciated shepherds. And it's them that God chooses to announce the birth of his son. Why? Why choose the shepherds? Why would God choose the shepherds, to give the greatest news that has ever been reported on the earth. You realize that every single reporter is waiting for this story. Every news reporter is waiting for this story. Everybody in Israel has been waiting for the proclamation of the Savior, the one who would come and help them. And God doesn't choose a prophet he doesn't choose a religious leader. He doesn't choose a Pharisee or a Sadducee or a Levite. He chooses shepherds. And, and for a lot of us, we, we realize that, yeah, well, he chose the shepherds because, because God wants to remind us that it's not about wealth and it's not about position and it's not about what you have and it's not about what, what you've been able to accomplish, that, that it's about humility and that God chooses a a humble people group to, to witness the birth of his son. But I, I think it has a lot more to do with the response of the shepherds 
than it necessarily does with their position that they held. Think about what, what happens in verses 17 and 18 with these shepherds. They're, they're in the fields, and if you remember, there's this just amazing moment where the, the sky lights up and there's angels there. How many of you have ever had that experience before? I'm lonely up here. Nobody's ever experienced this before. They don't have, they have no clue what's going on. The sky lights up and these brilliant white creatures that they've never seen before begin to tell them, don't be afraid. Okay. And, and so there's this moment where they're terrified and the angels say, it's okay. It's okay. I'm bringing you good news. And they tell them that Jesus has been born and that they're the ones that are supposed to go and find him. Look at verses 17 and 18. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Then in verse 20, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. You see, these shepherds had zero influence in their culture. Zero. Nobody listened to the shepherds because they didn't have any education. They didn't have any interaction with people. People didn't know if they could be trusted. And so people didn't come to the shepherds for news or for instruction. Yet God chooses them to go and spread the word. And what does the scripture say? All who heard were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Because of their position in society, the shepherds would have been blown away by this news and they would have been humble in their nature enough to do what God asked them to do. To not think more highly of themselves. If you think about it, from the perspective of the Pharisees, what is constantly happening in the, re in the relationship between Jesus and the Pharisees? Jesus is constantly trying to kick them off of their high horse. They're always trying to promote themselves, yet Jesus says, I come as a servant. And so who does he approach? He approaches people who are serving their community and their families. And he gives them the opportunity to share this good news. God knows that they would put this news ahead of their own agendas like a Pharisee would, like a reporter would. And so God knows that they're not going to miss the message. The shepherds aren't afraid of what other people think about them. They're just going to go and tell everybody. They don't care what anybody else has to say about them. They didn't overthink the situation. They didn't talk themselves out of this miraculous event. They were set on sharing and spreading the good news of the Savior that had been born in Bethlehem. They couldn't help but share the noise. They were so overjoyed by what God had revealed to them and showed them. It just spilled out of them. You know, if, if something wonderful happened to you, let's just pretend for a moment that, that something absolutely incredible happened to you. Who would you tell first? Who would you go to first and tell your, your spouse, your kids, your neighbor, your, your brother, your sister, your parents, your friends? God chose these shepherds not religious leaders, not wealthy, prominent citizens, or even well-educated men, because he knew that these shepherds would share and do exactly what God wanted them to do. You know, God, God calls you and I to do the exact same thing. He calls you and I not to promote ourselves, but to promote him. Not to promote our agenda or our message, but his agenda and his message. God uses the humble to share his message of love. God uses those, all of us who have been forgiven much, because we in turn then love much. 
Last week, two ladies came up here and reaffirmed their baptism. Two ladies that, that came to express the change that God was doing in their heart so that they could let the love of Jesus shine within them. Are they seminary trained pastors? Nope. Are they trained missionaries? Nope. They're just like the shepherds. And God chose them to share the love of Jesus with others, to share his story. And you know, you and I are just like them. And we're just like the shepherds. We're, we're not the religious prominent people in the community. Yet God has chosen us to share his message. In, in the gospel of Matthew, Jesus says that we are supposed to go into the world and share this good news. That we're supposed to be so overjoyed that God chose us. I'm such a sinner. I'm a ridiculous, terrible, awful person. Yet God chose me. He set me free. He changed my life. He took me from one place and fixed me up and made me like this. And he uses me. He wants to use me to share that good news with others. The joy of my salvation that overwhelms me and overflows from my life into others. God chose us to spread his good news because of the good news of your changed life. So how do you respond to the good news? Go Jesus, it's your birthday. How do you respond to the good news? Will the joy of your salvation flow from within you to other people? Or are you going to hear that great news and just hold on to it and keep it in your heart and make sure that nobody else knows? Because it's, it's for you and, and your, your faith is, is personal and you shouldn't share it with other people. So you should hold on to that and keep that quiet. That's not who God called you to be. That is a lie from the pit of hell. God has filled you with the joy of your salvation. He chose shepherds and he chose you and he chose me to be his messengers of the good news. And so God, as we... As we close up this morning, we, we thank you for the good news in that cantata. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that, that Jesus is the hope of the world, that Jesus is the answer to all of our problems, that Jesus is the one who gives us joy and life everlasting. And so I pray for all of us today, God, that, that we would rejoice like the shepherds rejoiced. God, that you would fill us with, with childlike wonder and amazement as we look at the Christmas story today and tomorrow and forever and ever. That God, the joy of our salvation would spill out from us onto other people and that we would be contagious with the good news that you have placed in our lives. We thank you and praise you for you are so good. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand together. Merry Christmas Eve. Go from this place as people that have the joy of the Lord inside of their soul. Go from this place as people who have been transformed by the good news. Go from this place as people who have been impacted by the news of the Savior of the world that you have the opportunity to share with those around you. So go there, therefore and make disciples of all nations. And that includes your family that you're going to have dinner with. Go in the joy of the Lord. Have an awesome Christmas Eve. We'll see you at 6 at New Dairy or 8 o'clock here. Have a great day.